This time last year, I had 30 rental properties and I thought that I was doing pretty good. Fast forward to today and I own 480 rental units and I should have over a thousand by the time the year ends. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how exactly I did that and how you can apply the same principles that I took to build your own rental portfolio. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan Pineda. I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur, and the goal of this channel is to help people live the wealthy way. If you wanna learn more about what that is, go to wealthyway.com for a bunch of free materials. I got into real estate back in 2010 as a licensed agent. And back at that time, I was just 21 years old, and I did not have any kind of desire to build a rental portfolio. I was just trying to do some deals and make some money. Eventually, I got burnt out doing that because I wasn't very successful, and the market was pretty tough to deal with back then. But around 2015, things changed for me in real estate. I learned about flipping and wholesaling real estate because that was really attractive to me since I was good at finding deals. But even as I started flipping houses then, I still didn't really have a desire to build a rental portfolio. I didn't have a lot of cash and the idea of trying to make a couple hundred bucks on a rental wasn't very appealing, especially here in Las Vegas where cash flow really wasn't that good. Any of the deals that I got, we were looking at potentially breaking even on cash flow or maybe making a hundred dollars a month when the alternative is you could flip the house and make $25,000 for me at the time not having any kind of cash it made way more sense to take the $25,000 and start building up my bank account but in 2017 just two years later that started to shift by then my house flipping business was doing really well and I wasn't reinvesting every single dollar into my next flip anymore I was starting to build up a little bit of money in my bank account and I knew that it was time to start building up my passive income and building up my portfolio. But at this time, I did not know what was the best way to build a portfolio, and so I ended up buying a little bit of everything. One of my first rental properties was a home I bought in Big Bear, California. I ended up paying $200,000 for this two-bedroom home, and I thought it was a pretty good deal. A comparable property in Lake Tahoe was selling for half a million dollars, and I felt like Big Bear was kind of undervalued, and it would be a cool place to visit from Las Vegas, since it's only about a three and a half hour drive. Well, about four and a half years later, I still own that same home and it's worth well over half a million dollars. And along with that, we decided to Airbnb it when I wasn't using it and we've made a ton of money in cash flow over the years. And because that property was so successful, I ended up buying seven more Airbnbs in Big Bear that we continue to operate to this day and they've made me hundreds of thousands in cash flow. But more importantly, they've appreciated over $2 million worth. Just by buying those rentals in the last few years, I've become a multi-millionaire on those alone. Now, obviously, that was a best case scenario for me when I bought that house in 2017. I didn't realize it would do what it did. Other than this market looks pretty undervalued and it would be a cool place to visit as a second home. But that same approach ended up failing me on other properties I was buying during that time. Back then, I used to go on all of these Facebook wholesaling groups and look for deals. People were always posting these 10 or $20,000 houses and they looked really attractive. In my mind, I said, if I buy a house for $20,000 and it rents for 800 bucks, how can I possibly lose? And so I ended up buying a bunch of different properties in all of these random places. I owned a duplex in Buffalo, New York, a duplex in Saginaw, Michigan, I bought a nice brick house somewhere in Arkansas. I had a property I bought for $7,000 in Indiana, and I bought a 2,500 square foot triplex in Pennsylvania for $12,000. Now you might be thinking, Ryan, those all sound like really good deals. What could have possibly went wrong? What they don't tell you is when you buy these really cheap properties, one major expense destroys your entire cash flow. For instance, on some of these, the repairs will cost more than what you paid for the actual house. Whether those were repairs that you have to make before it's lease ready, or maybe the repairs that you have to make during the lease. I remember one of the properties, the piping froze and then it ended up bursting, and the repair cost us more than the actual property cost us. You deal with more problem tenants because these are lower income housing. And then we dealt with just miscellaneous stuff like cutting the grass every week. I didn't know in Michigan you had to cut the grass so much, but it was costing me like 200 bucks a month and killing the cash flow. And honestly, to this day, I still don't even know if that grass really needed to be cut or if it was getting cut or if I was just some naive out-of-state investor that they knew would pay it. And so I ended up selling all of them for either a break-even or a loss. I think maybe one of them actually made money. But I can tell you they were a lot more headache than they were worth because I was buying them in all these random places. So I had to get a property manager in each place. I had to get a handyman in each place. And it was five times 
times the work for no reward. So that lesson taught me that if I'm gonna build a rental portfolio, I want to build them in the same market. This is why I started to buy more in Big Bear because I knew that I already had a team built out there and I really liked the market. Eventually, I started buying rental properties in Las Vegas as well. I bought some single families here and there, and then I ended up buying a 10 unit apartment for $300,000. And I just sold that same apartment almost three years later for $1.2 million. So that was pretty much what I was doing from 2017 to 2020, when I was just figuring out what exactly I wanted to do as I built a rental portfolio. Well, as I went into 2021, I had a goal that I wanted to buy 50 more rental properties. And in my mind, that was gonna be 50 different transactions. I figured I would cherry pick the best properties that we got here in Las Vegas that we were gonna flip, but instead I would keep a bunch of them. I thought maybe I might buy a couple more in Big Bear or go to another market for Airbnb. But either way, 50 new properties was the goal. And I figured if I have 30 now and I buy 50 this year, I'm gonna have 80 properties, which is a ton. Well, when I made a video talking about this goal, my buddy Tim Brott said, there's no way that you should be setting a goal for 50 units. He point blank said to me that I should buy 500 units in 2021. And I said, dude, I don't know how that's even possible. There's no way I could get finance for 500 units. How am I gonna go find 500 properties to buy? That's a lot of transactions. And he said, dude, you're gonna start a fund and you're gonna buy big apartments like me. For those of you who don't know, Tim has 5,000 rental units. We actually interviewed him on my podcast where he talks about it. You guys should definitely check that one out. But I said, okay, I don't really know how to start a fund. Can you help me out? He gave me his lawyer. He taught me the ins and outs of how you value commercial real estate. And I ended up building my own team for my new company called Pineda Capital. And I ended up partnering with Tim on our very first deal at Pineda Capital, where we purchased a 334 unit apartment building in Georgia. Since then, I bought another 126 units in Iowa. We've got another 100 units under contract right now that we're gonna be purchasing here soon. And I can tell you my old philosophy of wanting to just buy them one at a time by myself has completely shifted now that I've seen the other side. I've realized that with my following and my experience, we can raise money pretty easily to buy deals. I've also realized that if I open myself up to looking at deals all across the country instead of just Las Vegas, we can significantly increase our deal flow. And I've also realized that all of the network I've built up over the years, whether it was from other masterminds I was in, whether it's my social media following, or just the relationships that I've built over time, there's so many deals and money that just need to be connected and I can be the person to do that. And this is why I'm so excited about the fun model and why I'm going to be focused on that for buying all of my rental properties going forward. And the way that I'm gonna get to over a thousand units is by working with people just like you. If you have deals, but you're looking for the money to fund that deal, or you're looking for someone to sign off on the loan, then I can help you. If you're an accredited investor and you have money, but you don't have any deal flow or you don't wanna manage anything, being the glue that can combine the deals and the money together is going to allow me to buy a lot of properties, but it's going to also create so much equity for our investors and those who could not have did the deal before. So if you fit in either of those categories, go to PinedaCapital.com, apply for a call with our team, and I would love to be able to work with you. But maybe you're watching this and you still want to go one at a time like I was a few years ago. I think that's totally fine, especially as you're starting out in real estate and you're trying to build a portfolio. But I would encourage you to start looking at different syndication opportunities, whether you are being the operator of one or you're passively investing in one. It just makes it so much easier to grow your portfolio doing it this way than it does on your own. I'd rather own 25% of a 100 unit building than I would owning 25 separate doors. Doing one deal with 100 units is far easier than finding 25 other deals. And on top of that, I only have so much money of my own. So when I'm able to bring other people in on my deals and I don't have to bring in my own capital, I'm essentially getting a deal that I could not have done otherwise. And so it brings that much more value for our investors and for myself. And the same thing applies to you if you're a real estate investor. You are always gonna be capped out by your own money and your own capabilities. So the sooner you start incorporating others into your investing strategy some way, is the faster that you're gonna end up growing. And honestly, one of my favorite ways to work with people is through my coaching program. At Future Flipper, one of my students' name is Christian Bergman. Him and I actually played against each other in college and in the minor leagues. He ended up getting to the big leagues with the Mariners and the Rockies. But since retiring from baseball, he's gotten into real estate investing and that's why he joined Future Flipper. But instead of focusing on flips, he went straight into multifamily and started to syndicate deals.
deals. He now owns over 100 units, and he ended up bringing a deal to me recently, which we're going to purchase together. He's got a 44 unit apartment building in Phoenix, Arizona. I ended up walking it with him and it looks really good. So because we're in the same network with the same type of goals, we're now able to make money together and I now have a new opportunity for our investors. It's a complete win-win all the way around. So if you do plan to try and network for deals and raise money and JV together, definitely get in a coaching program where people are doing that. And if you wanna see what Future Flipper's all about, definitely go to futureflipper.com and get a call with our team there as well. But anyways, that's how I've scaled from 30 to 480 units. It's how I'm gonna continue to scale to well over a thousand, and I hope it opens your minds to different ways of investing in real estate. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.